Hello and welcome to Stand Up World, episode 34. Thank you for stopping in or watching today, whatever we want to call this nowadays in this world. But it is a crazy world. Um, I didn't have a Mitch McConnell moment, no. I knew what I was going to say next. I didn't freeze up. I was going to think about it. By the way, Mitch McConnell's not alone. We are, in a moment, we are run by the walking dead. I'm sorry. I don't like to get too political, but if you think about how many old people are running this country who cannot hear the dinner bell, as the great Robert Klein used to say, it's a tad sad. You see some of these guys and it just goes and goes. You just want to go, come on. There's got to be a meadow that you can walk through or the, a side of a river you could sit on and watch the, the water go by, listen to the birds hum. You don't need this. But then again, we all say that. We're all saying, hey, why do we need these old people? Why does it have to be this guy? Uh, hydrosonic. I call it super duper. Because super duper is easier for people to understand than hydrosonic. I call it the super duper missiles that go very fast. Hydrosonic, right? Super dupers. They go five to seven times faster than the fastest missile in the world. They go so fast you can't do anything. Against this guy. Bless you all. Let's go. Let's go late and lick the world. Let's get it done. Then think about what's coming up. Do we want these people to run this country? Do you know when the U.S. was founded? No. Take a guess. Around when? Probably like, I don't know, like 1901? Yes. Who fought in the Civil War? I don't know. Do you know how many continents there are? How many states make up the United States? How many states make... Dude! I know this. You know this. I, I do. That's crazy. I don't want to do this in a... Say enough. Do you know who the president is right now? Joe Biden. Do you know who the vice president is right now? The black lady. And look at who's in the wings anyway. I want to say this is a climate crisis. Oh. It's a trade crisis. Mm -hmm. And also, it's a carceral crisis. Huh? Because... As I have already said, even during this term and this president, our immigration system is based and designed on our carceral system. Totally wants to provide surveillance on every part of your life. They want to know when you're eating. They want to know if you're eating a cheeseburger, which is very bad because Bill Gates wants you to eat his fake meat that grows in a peach tree dish. So you'll probably get a little zap inside your body and that's saying, no, no, don't eat a real cheeseburger. You need to eat the fake, the fake burger. So this is my point. If we need a doddering old dolt or two still running the place for a while until, you know, what's really going to happen? The sun's going to land right smack into the earth and blow the hell out of the place. All right, I wanted to open up on something upbeat today, and I guess I just did. We have a really good show for you. I have a comedian guest who someone who I'm really excited about talking to. I want to remind you, oh, man, last night I had a great night, by the way, at the Hollywood Roosevelt in the Cinegrill room. I've been going there. My buddy Jimmy Shin produces a show and now i'm co-producing with him tuesday nights every tuesday night and last night we had an amazing show paul rodriguez jamie kennedy uh heather j uh, jimmy and my buddy jeff ross came he was so good it was it was just really a great show next week we have marlon waynes 
Paul Rodriguez, Jeremy Piven. It's the Hollywood All-Stars. So if you're in Hollywood at all, come by Tuesday nights at the Hollywood Roosevelt. It's it's an amazing room. It's a great show. Also, if you're in Santa Monica at all, on August 23rd, I'm starting a thing in a new room with the Santa Monica Comedy Company at La Puglia Restaurant on Wilshire Boulevard. We're doing a show with Vinnie Bassline and and Griffin James and Heather J. And we're going to have some really great acts there, too. A week from Sunday, I'm with Sarah Halstead, a really talented woman, puts on a show called Bottle Shock. And she's invited me to be on her show with her at the Improv a week from Sunday, August 13th. So those are some good shows coming up. If you're here in L.A. and if you're watching this from afar, hop a plane. That's what best I can tell you. Anyway, if you're in Boston or on the East Coast anywhere, you probably know today's guest. One of the hottest new comics on the Boston scene, and he's really he's really doing great. And it goes without saying, you know, the Boston comedy scene is so alive and and vivid and vibrant. They it, it produce so many great comedians through about three generations now. You know, starting from the early days of Lenny Clark and Stephen Wright and 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 uh, you know the the Dingho Boys, Bobcat Goldthwait, all, all all those early guys, to the Louis C.K. and the Bill Burr era, and this new era. These new guys are so good, and, and at the head of the pack is Will Noonan, and he just came up with a special, a YouTube special, fifty TikToks all at once, which I just loved, and I just this guy, he, he's he's at that same level of his. Boston predecessors, and he's killing it in Boston. He's touring all around the East Coast, and if you want to see a, a guy that a star in the making or a new guy in the ma- that's just you're going to be talking about, go to YouTube and watch his special. But more important, he's here today, Will Noonan. So what's going on? You know, by the way, I don't know if you know, but out here there's this new thing which is so fucked. Like they're not, they're saying to actors and and some community, you you can't go on podcasts for the strike and you or you can't talk about projects you're working on or you can't. It's like, oh come on, man! The podcast is the last <laughs> refuge of the sinner. Yeah, it don't, it's it's crazy. It's true. I think uh, it kind of one of the things I think that kind of sucks, and I I always complain to Patrick about this is like how Dateline NBC is like the number one podcast now. So is it's it just, really? yeah. And it's just the audio from the TV show. So it's sort of like the big players are like all in the mix now with podcasting. And well, there's something magical them. about hearing a pedophile get busted. That's what I'm saying. And I'm happy that if I want to get a hit podcast, I just got to start getting into murder, which is much yeah. easier to get into than, than comedy. So yeah, well, what we're going to be doing, Patrick and I have decided we're going to be luring comics on and then figuring out a way to kill them in the middle of the podcast. It's, uh, and we're starting with you. So, you know, the good thing about killing comedians is that most, most comedians are down for it. You know, <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm so ready to go. <laughs> I, I love my life. I love what I'm doing, but if a bus hits me, it hits me. Exactly. I feel that's that's kind of the vibe a lot of comedians have. You go, I'm not going to jump in front of a bus, but if it hits me, my last thought will be like, "It's a hey, no, I don't have to fly this weekend. I don't have to go do that gig this weekend. My last thought is, hey, that's a good anecdote. A bus <laughs> is a fucker. I don't know another comedian who got hit by a bus. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Yeah, that's that'll be my last thought now. I'm gonna steal that. And my last thought's now gonna be, oh, I had to steal my last thought from Mike Binder. Fuck. Damn. He had that fucking get hit by a bus <laughs> thought. And I'll go- I got hit by a bus. <laughs> I had it first, my last words. <laughs> I thought it <was> first. <laughs> so what's going on? Are people loving the special? Yeah, I'm getting a lot of uh a lot of feedback on it. I've been doing a lot of live shows and 
and it's been the thing everyone wants to talk about. And it's been, uh, it's been really cool. It was so much work and so much excitement. Now it feels like, uh, it's been out for like a year, even though it's only been out for like a month. Yeah, you know it's, I mean? it's, been, it's been out a month. <laughs> I know it's barely been out at all, but no, no. Here's my question for you: are, are you are you able to do the material in it? I'm I'm doing some of it because some of these gigs I I have are huge, and I'm just um, starting over. Basically, you know what I mean. I have probably about twenty new minutes, but they're not like ready to be taped or anything like that. Um. So yeah, it's been a bit of a balancing act. I feel like every weekend there's less of the special and more new stuff. And now it's probably down to maybe like 10 minutes of the special, you know, just some, some big hits here and there. Um, but this is my first time even dealing with anything like that. So and what, but, but are you fine when the people have seen the special, they want to see the material, don't they? Yeah, that's an interesting thing I'm figuring out too. I get a lot more requests, like joke requests and, um, you know, I don't mind. I don't. I never like minded it really that much. If I saw a comic and he did one of his greatest hits or something like that, uh, Anthony Clark is a guy I used to see every time he was in town, and you'd usually get a couple of the same jokes, you know, here and there. And uh, as a fan, I never minded it, but I think as a comic, that's one of the things we get into our own heads about other comics. Like, I, like sometimes I'm like, geez, I hope the MC doesn't think I'm a hack because I'm doing two jokes from my special. Yeah. And I'm like, maybe I should worry about the 400 people out there and not the MC. <laughs> I used to have this day at Disneyland bit and people would always call it out and I would go, what am I, a fucking jukebox? <laughs> what are you? <laughs> you don't fucking, I, I'm not a trained seal. <laughs> I know, man. And it's... Then I'd go, I'm so glad you said that. Here's the joke. <laughs> I know. It's I've been, uh, been waiting yeah, you're for like... someone to say. Yeah, please. I've been dying for somebody to call out one of my jokes. I had a guy one time I opened for a tell at, at, a, at the Wilbur, big theater, and I walk out on stage, and the guy goes, Mayflower! Like a guy in the crowd yells out, Mayflower! And I was like, well, that's my closer. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like yelling out the closer as I'm walking on stage. That's I was funny. like, oh, he's a fan. Have you played yeah. the Wilbur a lot? Yeah, it's an opening act a few, a uh, bunch of times now. Uh, I love doing it. It's one of my favorite places because it's. Uh, I used to see stuff there when I was a kid, like plays and stuff. But it's just old and and cool and has like ghosts. I want to see you headline there, man. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, I told the guy Bill Blumenreich once when I was doing Nick's comedy stop, and I was walking by the Wilbur, and I was like smoking a joint. And I was like, hey, save me a weekend 10 years from now. <laughs> All right. And I kept yeah, walking. That's really so funny. probably banned for life. No. <laughs> Jeff Ross is playing there in a couple of weeks, I think. Oh, dope. He's hilarious. I, I was I was actually there recently. I think with Patrick went with me. We saw Theo there. Oh, yeah. Uh, didn't you go, Patrick? Was that you? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I... I what a great room for comedy. Yeah, I did um, two years ago, I did New Year's Eve with Andrew Schultz there. Wow. And it, it was like electric. You know, we did, I think, two shows, uh, two nights, uh, or four shows and two nights. But on New Year's Eve, we did two shows and did one at midnight. Uh, and it was just like, I, I don't, I was like, and nothing I've ever seen before. It was just completely nuts. Yeah. And and where are you playing now? What what kind of you're just dry, going all up around the East Coast? I see. Yeah, I just did my. I just headlined a theater for the first time myself in Nashua, uh, wow. New Hampshire. So wow. it was like they they booked it like six months ago, and I was like, these guys are crazy. I'm never going to sell enough tickets for this. And uh, between us, between them marketing it really well and me doing a bunch of stuff, we got it pretty close to sold. And it was like it was it was like. You know, I understood every comic. I was like, oh, I, I want every show to be like this now forever. This was like right. the best time of all time. I had a That's dr great. dressing room, walk out there. It's all perfect. And then you just walk back and eat a slice of pizza and go home. It was it was fantastic. Yeah. That's great. That's great. <laughs> yeah. And, and how long did you do? I did like close to an hour, I think, 55. I have a weird... Uh, I'll always do 45 minimum 
and I'll sometimes go to the hour. But I will, I'll say this even on stage. I'll, if I see people start yawning and looking to the exit, um, I'm not there to like ruin. I feel like that, that'll ruin me for them. If they liked me up until that point and then I keep holding them there. And this is all because I used to smoke cigarettes. Uh, I quit like six or seven years ago. But sometimes I'll even tell the audience, I'll be like, okay, this is the last joke. So if you smoke cigarettes, five minutes from now, you'll be having one. Yeah. And it, and it gives them <laughs> gives them like a, a finish line to look That's forward great. to. What I don't like is, and it happens to a lot, is like when you realize like a third of the audience is on a laptop and shit oh, yeah. and have headsets on and you realize they're working. Jeez. <laughs> you know, Jeez, this isn't a Starbucks. I know. That's that's more, I mean, that's just getting more and more common when the front row is just like doing this while you're on stage. Oh, and man. I, I just. I've been playing uh, the Hollywood Roosevelt a lot, which is the the, the um, Cinegrill room, which is really great because it's kind of like a little mini theater. It's really a great that's setup. That's cool. But the people in the front row are just. The way it's set up, they're just so exposed to the comedians. Oh. And they're, they're like, and you can, you you can just feel that they don't want to be there. They, yeah. They're like, really? And they're the last people. They take the, the last seats other than standing room only. So they're, they're just like, you just know that they're going, you yeah. know that they're sitting there going, I'm going to be, I, you're on the, they're almost on the stage. There's eight seats. And they're almost on the stage and they're just all lit up. And, yeah, and, that's and the worst. And, and they're just, they're just used. You can't, when you walk out on that stage, you've got to deal with those people at the front or else, you know. And, I, 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 so I know the kind of gig you're talking about. I always feel that way. It's like you have to start with the front row and work your way back to, to the rest of the room because yeah. if, cause they're so visible. They're like on with you. If yeah. they're not laughing, the rest of the audience is like, oh, I guess this isn't funny because the. And if you don't use them, it's like you, you, you're you just coming out and you're doing a preset show. You, 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 you're not, you're not, yeah. the audience doesn't feel that you're, you're fluid enough. So yeah. what happens is you just start messing with these people. And what, so once you do that and it's great, the audience loves it. These poor people don't get away with anything. If if a guy goes to the bathroom, is it, all right? We'll wait here here for you. If a guy for some reason picks up his phone, a woman goes through her purse. What are you doing? And it's everybody, every right act, now. all night long, and you can just see that, and the audience <laughs> loves it. But you can see they they just go so weary of it. It's like I, I fucking have, it's an itch, okay? <laughs> it's a scratch. It's psoriasis. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it and I've done it and I've felt bad for doing it. You know, sometimes like uh, I've seen people at Capo, especially when I'm hosting, they'll get up and if they even make eye contact with me, there's like a, you can see the fear in their eyes. Like, oh, he's going to yeah. say something. And and uh, I never really do that, but every once in a while. I love Capo, by the way. I, Thanks. Well, I, I think I've played it three times already, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I love it. I, I, I really do. I, 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 I just... That that whole part about the people in the back just talking, I would just, I would just be if I were there regularly, I, if I I would just be slapping them, going, hey, knock yeah. it off. It's knock not, it off. you know, who handled them really well recently was Jimmy Tingle was in, and he did, oh, he, he he went after them. It, it was like a school teacher, but a good one. It wasn't like a, it didn't come off bad at all. But that's the weird thing about what that room. What did he say? What did he say? He was literally just kind of like talking to them like children. He was like, hey. Shh. Okay, I'm telling. Like he would like kind of like quiet them, like but in a soothing way, and um, it was it worked on on a sort of osmosis level. But then we had last week. We you could have heard a pin drop. They were like a real crowd the whole place. So That's it's just great. it's just it's sort a cool of room. It's a cool room. I really think. Yeah, I love it. I'm heading there it looks tonight. Great on your special. It, it, I, yeah, the film the, on film. It looks so great. Thanks. I agree. And when you said that to me. At Capo, I was like, it meant the world to me because I was like, there's a real director telling me that this room looks good. Because that was like me and Patrick and a few others who were there a lot. We were like, we got to film something here. Like, this place just looks so cool. And and I'm, I was like, I'm sure it's going to look brilliant on film. And it does. 
looks cool. Well, it's, it's really funny because, you know, Mark Norman, who I'm a big fan of, you know, he just had the special on Netflix and he did it at the Vic Theater in Chicago. Yeah. Which, and I filmed like one of my early HBO shows there years ago. Um, was they were they did they did a thing i don't i don't know if you ever remember they were like one night stand oh yeah i was they obsessed half, with those. half hour specials and it was yeah. the night i filmed it was myself and ellen degeneres so they would do two people would do it together <laughs> you know and it was just a real nothing looking room you know yeah. and and you know we had luckily we had a good um we had good directors that <laughs> did backgrounds for us and stuff but it was it's just an and when i heard mark was filming his there and then i just saw it recently and it it's just it's just okay but yeah. you know luckily he you know he's just so rapid fire he shoots it off it's just an okay looking special you know especially yeah. like when you when you compare it to like uh tom uh, Segura, Segura special, yeah. which was so good looking, or 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 Burr at Red Rocks, was... Burr at Red Rocks, of course, or, or <laughs> I mean, the the way Paper Tiger was shot. I mean, yeah. I mean, the, the, neither of those specials are funny, but I, <laughs> I will tell you, they look great. If only he had talent, you know. I was gonna say, mm -hmm. I bet. I also bet, knowing Mark, they probably told him. You know, we used to film one night stands here in the eighties and nineties, and he was like, "Oh God, gotta do it! Put sign me up, I'm in." Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, sure yeah, yeah. Like, Comedy, comedy. Like he loves the he loves to do anything like you know I'll, I'll historical. Tell you, did, did you did you ever remember um remember Robin Harris? I'll tell you really. Ellen and I shot our special on uh, I think like it was a Tuesday night, and Robin Harris was shooting his special on. A Wednesday night, and I forget who the other comic who he shot with, but we had the same agent, Bill Gross. And after they shot Robin's special, everyone went to dinner. And the next morning, we flew. I flew to New York to do some press stuff. And Bill was waiting down in the lobby for Robin, and they couldn't open it, get his door open. And finally, the security opened the door, and he was in bed dead. He had passed out. He had, he had passed away, and he oh, died man. just of a, of a heart attack of natural natural causes. Holy that, that, shit! And he had, he had just filmed his 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 special, and he was they went out for a congratulatory dinner, and every he was fine. And he just he just died in his sleep. Well, at, at the height of his, he was doing so good, and I mean, Robin was. Robin was a legend. That's already. crazy. That he story is wild. It was nuts. It was really nuts. I, you know? That's that that happens too. Like that, I know. I mean, I, and Bob Saget, but there's other comedians that are not household names that have died in the hotel. Um, yeah. I know. I know a guy. I won't say his name, but I know it's like one of his biggest fears. This comedian I know, who's always on the road. He's like, I just don't want to die in the hotel. I want, it's like uh, oh yeah said. you know if i comedians were smart they would sleep in the alley behind the hotel because <laughs> i've never heard of a comedian dying in an alley behind the hotel but no. comedians always die it's really funny i was with i opened for the um the bump and mike guys recently and we were at, at this casino and dennis miller came in wow he's an old friend of mine and he came in to see these guys he's a fan of these guys and he lives up near there and he was like, yeah, no, I'm retiring. And he, he actually said, he goes after Saget. And then he goes, I'm just like, I don't want to die in a hotel. You know, I just, yeah. you know, I just, I'm, I'm fine staying home. I don't want to be on the road. And yeah. It's uh, you know, it's that post COVID everyone reassessed uh, what their priorities were and stuff like that. But and what happened to me? Cause I'm, that got me out on the road. I, 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 yeah, I'm, you, just, you're the I'm just, I'm just the opposite. I'm, I'm just like, <laughs> man, I'm not going to stay at home anymore, man. This I is know. crazy. This I know, is crazy. Don't lock me up. It's like you either went one of two ways. I think people either are like you and they're like, get me out of here. Or people are like, Oh man, I enjoyed being a homebody. I, I had no idea. You know? Uh, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. 
and so i mean are you gonna be on the road a lot now are you gonna i don't know it's been weird man i uh it was i was only doing it a little bit before covid i was doing like the east coast florida to to boston you know um and then covid hit and i just really focused more on new england because that was what i could do and now it seems like i'm always just booked like for the next six months in the northeast you know, so I keep kind of doing it. Yeah, I get to New York and, and, and Pennsylvania, but I'll go wherever they want me to come. You know what I mean? <laughs> They'll pay me to go. <laughs> no, that's great. Uh, listen, so you, because, but you're Boston born and bred. Right? Yeah, and I do love it here. And I am sort of involved in a bunch of community type things now and all kinds of stuff. But yeah, I really do love Boston. Pat will tell you. Wait, is that code for like you're in the mafia? Or what, 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 is, what is that? Don't, 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 let's not talk over that. That's- well, that was one of my things. Like, I was like, you know, I want to get in, I want to know like more. So I try and like, uh, you know, I, I teach comedy now as well. And do you uh, really? Yeah. And I, wow. you know, I, I try and help out some younger comics with some addiction issues and stuff like that. Little things like that. But wow. Yeah. That's great. Good for you. Yeah. Not that I'm like, I mean, I, I smoke a lot of weed, so I'm not some kind of like, <laughs> expert but you know i i've sort of become this weird like uh big brother to a lot of people here and uh but i don't i like it i don't take it lightly it's it's a, well you know listen if you want to get off marijuana one of the things you want to get learn from is a guy who's smoking a lot of it <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah i'm like hey do you want this you want great <laughs> no, hair and a comedy exactly, special exactly <laughs> <laughs> ah. no. but, 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 no, well, so great, when I was like 26, I'm 40 now. When I was 26, I went through a little thing. I went through some dr- drinking issues and some like, I would say anxiety issues. And I was public about it. And it took, you know, and then I cleaned up my act kind of and got my shit together. And uh, so a lot of times when someone is in that same mode, usually around 23, 24, 25, 26, uh, I'll get a call or I'll get some, uh, texts and, you know, it's like, I just feel like one of, one of the bonuses of having all this technology is that you're right there and you can just be like, you know, instead of some guy freaking out alone in a hotel room, you can just be like, Hey man, like, you know, there's, there's hope for you and it's going to get better and all that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, that's great. (laughs) But I was also going to say what's great is, you know, being in Boston, and one of the things I, I can imagine is you can do a lot of touring and not having to jump on a lot of planes or anything. You it's can the best. drive. Cause... Yeah, it's great, and I love cars, so this is it's a perfect. Too, yeah. yeah, it's a perfect like thing. Um, yeah, even DC is is drivable uh, when you're doing gigs along the way and stuff like that. So yeah, it's pretty great. Or trains, right? You trains. Take a, train. a lot of people do take the train. I like. I love my own car and having the freedom of being in my own car and the space, my own space. Uh, I've had uh, some famous comics in my car that have like made fun of it to no end because it's old. Like I have 200,000 miles on my road car right now. And Greg, Great. Fitz, Greg Fitzsimmons like loves to ride in it because I think it makes him – it's close enough to being a poor destitute comic like he used to be, but not so close that he can't just get out of it. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it, he's it probably lets him know that, you know, a couple bad humps of the ball and he could be back <laughs> in, in that car. Right in that, right that 06 Accord with me, you know. But, keeps uh, him humble. He's smart. He's smart that way. But, yeah. and, and I, but I listen, my thing is I don't really like going through airports and airplanes. And for man. me, I, I will drive to Vegas. I will drive to San Francisco. If I I got it figured out that if it's a five or a six hour drive, it's worth it for me. It's it's another two hours by the yeah. time I go to the airport, park, wait there, get up, get down, get a car, go to the airport in the second yeah. place, leave. And I like having my own car and, you know. Oh, you're so right. That's the way to go. Yeah. And I just like it. 
Well, it's like, become such a fucking. It's so brutal to fly. Like it's. Oh, uh, they're just well, like assholes to you from the second you walk in the door to the second you arrive where you're going. And it's well, ex- especially me because I'm an asshole the minute I get there. Right? <laughs> Same. You know that. You know when they saw that girl recently that was yelling at the back I, of the plane. Yeah. I thought, God, I do that every flight. <laughs> I was I'm like. That- Every flight, she's she's doing me. She saw me on some flight. Whenever whenever someone goes crazy on an airplane, I'm like, I'm surprised it doesn't happen every day. I'm surprised it doesn't happen every single flight. You know, um, and I some- love I love those. I saw this one yesterday. This couple, I don't know if you saw this. This couple got in a fight no. and got thrown off the plane. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and the people are sitting there so quietly. And that's what blows my mind because I would not be that quiet. Oh I'd be God. like, I'd be like, she started it. Or, or <laughs> I'd be saying to him, Hey man, here's what you need to say to her. Here's what you should have said to her. And you would not be getting thrown off the plane. Okay. <laughs> you shut her up right here. If you just told her, you know, <laughs> and, and, and then I'm, I'm on her side, man. I don't know. Yeah, she, she if he's not putting away the dishes, he doesn't care. You just yeah, gotta, right. he's never, once a, once a cheater, always a cheater. He's never going to change. Yeah. You know? Yep. And then there's yeah. a guy right in front of him and he had his iPods on and he was on camera the whole time the guy was filming it. And he was like, there's no way you're listening to anything but what's going on behind you. This couple's whole marriage yeah. is coming apart and you're telling me you're listening to sweet baby James. <laughs> No way. (laughs) Yeah, you'd have to. I mean, I'd be recording it. I'd be like saving it. (laughs) But I, but I just really, I, I just, I'm is done with it. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why I want to move to Nashville because I feel like from Nashville, I could get anywhere to do stand up. I can get a lot of places in five to eight hours. You know. I like that. I mean, I think you're. I think a lot of people would agree with you. I think you're going to start seeing a lot more. You already are seeing more people doing road trips again, like with their families uh, to like uh, Grand Canyon and Yellowstone. They're having like record numbers because people just don't want to go through it. You yeah. pay pay a couple thousand dollars to have a miserable time yeah. on an airplane. Yeah. yeah. And, if, and, and what what's your feeling, feeling? I was talking to a couple comics last night. Comedy seems so hot right now. I mean, in L.A. at any time, there's 200 rooms packed. Oh, yeah. I mean, do you think that's going to continue? I mean, I'm always wrong about this. I've I've been feeling like the bubble's been about to burst for like two years. Uh, It's weird to me, you know, to see all these attractive young people who in the past probably would have become actors or singers trying to be comedians first, like that's their first thing they're going after. Uh, like young, you know, 22 year old, beautiful girls are like, I want to talk about all my problems. I like, go, part of this is good. Like, uh, you know, part of this is bad. I, I think comedy, people who write comedy, people who really care about comedy are, this is a great time for them, but we're sharing the space with a lot of Instagram people who just want to be famous, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's sort of, I feel like the Instagram stuff is sort of like a deal with the devil. Like that, that is good for all of comedy in a way because it gets more eyes on comedy, but it also has like lowered the quality of what comedy is. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I guess I was talking more about people enjoying a night out. So oh, in a, way, okay. in, a way, <laughs> in a way, those, those people are bringing people out, you yeah. know, uh, you know, I I do I think th- that never bothers me because I feel like comedy is so hard to get really good at. Yeah, it takes that's true. so long that there's a natural culling occurs. You know that I you agree. Can have, you can have some cute little blonde girl who gets in and she gets some laughs, and she's can put some good Instagram reels together and puts a following together, but it's going to take her so long to get good, to get great that. No, you're right. She's going to be a 40 year old kind of dumpy midlife (laughs) lady. 
<laughs> eventually by the time she's excellent. You know? No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I think, and it doesn't really bother me that much, but I do notice that it's more often than ever. People are like, do you know this comedian? And I'm like, I've never heard of that name before. And it's someone with a million followers um, and stuff like that. But I do, as far as the night out thing, I think you're absolutely right. It's, it's always been great. Um, I mean, when I started in 07, people were like, you're doing stand-up comedy? Does anyone even do that anymore? Like, it really wasn't popular. And No, it wasn't. And when I started in 77, 30 years before that, right? Yeah. It was non-existent. Yeah, And then exactly. it got hot. Then it got really hot again. And then it died again. But... So it does come up and down, but I don't think yeah. it's ever become as accessible and, and as people. And one of the reasons that I think it's going to stick around is one of the things that burned it out in the big, the big first big bubble was there was stand up too much stand up comedy on television. Right. Whereas I don't think there is too much on television now. No, know? not a ton. I mean, what is television now? You know what I yeah. mean? It's kind of like you watch what you want to watch. So if you're not yeah. into comedy, like I'm not really that into, I don't know. I mean, I, let's say you're not into horror movies, you know, like you just skip right. over, you just skip over that part of Netflix and that's what people right. do with that's comedy. Right. So I think, um, I, I, so going back to like Boston, right? Like I think the idea of, comedy as live entertainment as something to do is is has grown so much in the past couple of years and there's so many shows there's almost not enough comedians to fill the shows and i think that's a great thing you know i think i think and that, i think a lot of that is podcasting you know people listen to podcasts they 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 know more about stand up they know like you know a lot of people think they're experts on stand up now and, uh, but I like that. I'm like, I think I'm an expert on baseball. I go to the game. Yeah, you know, I watch. that's right. But by the way, it's funny you mentioned Boston because I think that if you look at great comedy towns like Boston and San Francisco, yeah, that is kind of, if you look at those towns, they became great towns and it didn't stop. No, nope. it, it was, a, it, it perpetuated a next generation and a next generation and other clubs and more clubs and the Wilbur and, and uh, little concert halls that are, you know, the, so yeah. it really, and I think the country's become that now you have Austin and Nashville and absolutely. And, and even Detroit is becoming a really big comedy town, and you know, even, even Detroit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because you know, we, we really used to just make, cars and hookers yeah. you know we were <laughs> we were turning out the new model of hooker every every couple of years that the whole country wanted and you know <laughs> and, and that's why i've always loved detroit <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely that i remember that 1979 uh giselle that every <laughs> yeah. every every guy wanted to fuck her yeah and, with the j and, <laughs> giselle with the j it was, uh, yeah. it was signed by Lee Iacocca. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, he, yeah. No, she was fucked by Lee Iacocca. <laughs> yeah. He got the first one. Yeah. And then <laughs> it, it started, I think, with the 52 T-Bird. She was. <laughs> and then they actually named a car after her. If I So if I'm going to have sex with a car, this, there's a 1969 Mustang right here. Oh, man. That's a beaut. That's one of my favorites. That's, that's a 69, though? Looks, oh, actually, no, this no, is a that, 64. It, this is a 64. Thought. This is yeah. the original. Yeah, this is the original. Yeah, I, I say the 69 oh, yeah. looked a lot different. No, I, the, yeah. this, this morning I was looking at a 69 Mach 1, so that's on my brain right now. Yeah. But the, the 69, they, they just, that, was, that was the year that the, everybody thought they did a new Coke kind of thing. Yeah. They changed the whole look of it. You know? I changed the model, yeah. I'm yeah, a big Mustang but, guy. I, I, uh, they do that. They, they do it every, I think it's like every gener. There's six generations now or five generations. It's amazing. And, uh, and yeah. by the way, getting back to the hookers, same thing. Exactly. It, it, now, now Lizzo is the new, uh, this <laughs> is the new model. <laughs> I miss the buttons. You know, I miss buttons you could touch on a, on a, on a prostitute. Now it's all touchscreen. 
Boy, Steve Byrne, I saw today on uh, on Twitter, Steve Byrne had the best joke. He said, he said, I'm just surprised. You, did you hear, you heard of what happened with no. Lizzo? Well, a bunch of her road crew, uh, her oh, dancing yeah. crew is suing her because they made, she was making uh, them Ban- put bananas in their vagina. And he goes, I'm just surprised Lizzo had anything to do with food that healthy. <laughs> Isn't that a great joke? That is good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Bulger's yeah. Dan Dan Bulger's got a great joke about Lizzo, where he's like, uh, he's like, peanut butter's got a lot of fat, but uh, the good fat, you know, like Lizzo. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. That's really funny. I love it when comedians quote other comedians' jokes. <laughs> Oh yeah. You know, it's really funny. Long before I knew Mark Norman, Burr used to always quote, tell his abortion joke to me. He was always telling me this joke that this joke about and he was I forget he said this guy Mark that opens for my buddy and I I think he was talking I, I, he might have been talking about Dane or somebody, yeah. you know. But he, and he would always go and he has this great abortion joke about uh, I, I, I did an abortion joke and then this woman comes up to me afterwards and says, I, you know, your abortion joke really triggered me because I had an abortion. And I said, well, to be honest, I think you did something worse than I did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like for years I always heard that joke. I thought, what a great joke. And yeah. then, then, I, was, I, then I, I met Norman and I saw him do it. Oh, fuck. He does it so much better than I heard it told. I was going to say, hand, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, I was going to say that's the sign of a great joke is that it can be kind of butchered a little bit by a few yeah. people and still be funny and still be yeah. a funny joke, you know. Yeah, that's, that's right. so great though. That, that's, that's really that's yeah. really great. I'll tell you the one I've been butchering a year is just the hell out of it. Is I try to tell people your your bit the bit about the the next door neighbor with the The chickens chickens. (laughs) and and you realize as you start telling it you can't it's it's one of those bits you realize you go oh fuck i shouldn't even start it yeah i was gonna say i I was like wow that's a tough one to pick (laughs) i know i know i just like because i love the bit so much and and he has this bit you got to see the special and and now i'm telling the bit and and you just see people go oh (laughs) yeah i mean i'll tell you Mike, like I get tripped up on that bit sometimes. It's a lot of moving parts in that one. It's probably the most complicated joke I've ever done. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. I'm 65, you know. So some nights I do a late show, and every joke is the most complicated. Joke. <laughs> I feel you. I was I was doing the show last night. It was like 10 30, 10 o'clock, and I was just and I I was killing. But in my head, I was like, I cannot believe how many times I have screwed up or in this set. <laughs> you know, like just little words that I've tripped over yeah. or had to make a joke about or or had to like in a setup, I forgot to say, oh, and his son came out of the closet. Uh, so it does not, the punchline is not going to make a sense. So I have to, you, do you know what I mean? I've done and, it a million times. And of you're course. Thinking, how, how can I fix it while I'm in here? And you're totally. Dude. But, but I, you know, when you get older, man, you just like it's like a little late at night, man. You just go, oh fuck, yeah. You know, I I I, sh- I should pay attention to those commercials that help your memory or whatever. Or, I'm with or you, something, man. I mean, I'm only forty, but when I do like two shows in one night and two headlining sets in one night, sometimes I'm in that middle of that second one, and I'm like, did I say this already? Did I say this this way? Or you know, you get those weird. I mean, it's like uh, I was just saying to a, co- a comedian last night. I go, that's one of the weird things about comedy is it's like everyone, you know, talks about ADHD. I go, it's like a superpower if you're a comedian. You have to think about five things at the same time when you're yeah. up there. Yeah, and it's amazing. It's amazing it, how, what you re- how many channels you're on. Yeah, and you really think, well, you know. When you're really killing, you're only on one, but you're never on one. No, it's just sort of, you're in that flow state when you're really killing. But I think that's more like, yeah, you're more like a Jedi in that moment, like where it, 
everything becomes one, but you're still, you're still working through all those different things. You know, it's, it's funny that you say that though, because so one of my students is, uh, does impressions, you know, which is sort of a throwback. I've never had a, a student that does impressions. He does them well. And he does, um, he does bits with them and stuff like that. But anyway, the point of it was, I was like, man, I, I, I go one liner guys and impression guys. It's like singing. It's like, if you miss one note, the whole performance is kind of blown. You know, if you miss, if you mess up an impression, it's like the crowd's kind of like, uh, this guy's not that good. It's like the magic trick is, is, is gone. You know, I was like, I love just being a, sort of normal long form standup because then it's like we can make mistakes and like fix the mistakes right. in real time and right. not have to really stress so much on hitting everything just so perfect, you know? That's right. So, cause and, I, and the, 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 also the advantage of it too is, and I always think this when I think about Jezelnik or Steve Wright is if I write a bit and it works, it's a minute. Yeah. It's a minute and a half sometimes, you know. Oh yeah. If, if Jeselnik writes a great line, he knocked he knocked off a good seventeen seconds. <laughs> I know, and it's you know, it's it's. I give those guys a lot of credit. I think it's a really tough tough like road to sew, and uh, I've seen it go great, and I've seen it go bad a million times. You know, yeah. it's a tough yeah. forty five. I feel bad. For, I feel when they get to headlining s- status, I'm like, that's a tough. Yeah, you know I, I'm good buddies with Steve Wright. You know we've been friends for years, and I, but and I we we were talking not long ago. I think oh, I was doing the Comedy Store documentary, and I asked him. I said, "Are you doing a special?" And he's just like, "No." <laughs> and I well, why'd you say it like that? He goes. I'm not going to be able to come up with any that much new material again ever wow really he goes yeah i mean it's just you know i'm just yeah. no <laughs> you know i went okay i mean good for it was him. so definitive you yeah know? he's like he knows himself you know yeah uh, you know one of the he he lives around here i think right or he used to yeah, or something yeah, he, does. he does yeah he was popping into shows for a while this was a long a, a long time ago when i met him but I was on stage at the old comedy studio in Harvard Square and I like heard him laugh. I heard like his unmistakable laugh, small room. And I look over and I'm, he's laughing at my jokes. And I was just like, I can't believe this. You know what That's I mean? Good. And then, and then after he was like, he was like really funny stuff, you know? And I was just, I couldn't believe it. I, I oh, still can't great. believe it. It's one of the yeah, great, he loved, great he loved comedy. You know, yeah. it's funny cause he was in town recently and he, I went to dinner with him and Mike Armstrong, who's a really good pal of his. And we were talking about him working out new material and stuff. And I said, you know, God, I just had come from Boston and there's all these little rooms and shows and that's what you should do. You should be jumping up. And yeah, I told him about Cabo and, you know, and he, he was like, I don't know, maybe I should, or maybe I should, and maybe I should just, go up under another name or something. And I said, I, I, I don't know about that, but, and, but he, he should said, though, it would be even just you know, to, for the fun of it, you know, just to get back. Cause he was talking about the, cause he put, he, you know, he still goes out and plays theaters and, and that's where he kind of works out material, but he, he just, he was saying, you know, maybe I should just go and play clubs, but he's just so far removed from that, that yeah. era of his life. He, he doesn't have to, He's, I'll tell you, he's just one of the greatest guys in the world. Yeah, I, just, I love that guy fan. so much. I've never he's heard cool. anyone say anything bad about him or anything. There's but, nothing bad to say about him, you know? Yeah. There Not really like you. Is. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. My past is just littered with, with assailants <laughs> and evil. People just write. When I die, people, people are, even if I don't get hit by the bus, they're just, they're coming to the funeral just to shit on me. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm kidding though. Everyone loves you too. Everyone couldn't, couldn't believe we made friends. Everyone's like, "How did you make friends with Mike Binder?" I love that guy. I love oh, Mike that's Binder. nice. Yeah, that's nice. I'm like, well, he's mine. Back the fuck off. Yeah, man. back off. <laughs> well, listen, man. I really appreciate you coming on. Me and too. I, I, what I really wanted to talk 
about your special and f- find out how it was going, you know, because yeah. I love it so much. You Thanks, know? I man. Just, I really, Honestly. you know, I, I really, uh, I've been really f- trying to focus on, on the, the specials that I like and the new specials and yours is one of them that just, I always, whenever I get into a conversation about it, I talk about yours. Dude, appreciate I just, that, man. I just that feel is... like, I feel like it's got such great stuff in it. So I really, Dude, I really thank you. a lot of people get to see it. I do too. I'm uh and I, man, that means the world to me. It's so crazy that we're even having this conversation. Uh, like I, I, uh, been a fan forever, you know, and it's, uh, I, I mean, I have to say it on the podcast. I used to literally, jerk off to the mind of the married man i'd <laughs> i would like there were boobs in it you know yeah this we was, had a lot of boobs it was pre boobs. it was pre-internet and this was what i had and <laughs> and look at us now <laughs> yeah. well let me you see that's the difference in the 25 years between us i was jerking off to national geographic <laughs> so, at least you had something like yeah, Ivana Ivana Malikovich. Exactly. Know? I mean, that was okay. And, and I had Zulu warriors. What if that's okay. why I became a why? If, what if that's why I became a comedian? You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. uh, after that, I had to sit there and enjoy the comedy and be like, yeah, oh, yeah, right. this guy's that's got great right. timing. Hey, look at that, Bobby hey. Slayton. <laughs> but but I also, you know, one of the things that I think is really great about the world we're in now, especially in terms of your special just lives on and it's there. And yeah. you know, anybody who sees you do a great show or sees you on a podcast can now just go over to YouTube and watch the special. It's not That's like, right. Oh man, it was on HBO, but it's off now. Or it was, you know, no, it, I, it, I, I agree. It, it just lives. And, and, you know, I know that from, you know, I made a lot of movies and, and, and I made movies in an era where if it didn't have, great opening weekend it wasn't in the theaters for a long time and i would find that these movies had these long lives and and people just would be coming up to me 10 12 years later hey we watched it upside anger last night it was fucking great i you know and it's so great and that's what's gonna you were gonna find that about your special it's gonna i think so too be brand new to people eight years from now someone you agree um, it's, it's, it's also a COVID, I feel like it has, a, it's a little bit, you know, I wanted to get it done, like, after this crazy thing that happened and have it sort of mark that period of time, and then move on from it, you know what I mean? So I think uh, that, yeah, I think you're so right about that. And I've also lost like seven pounds since then. So the good thing is, if you come see me now, I'm I'm new and improved. Oh, look, he's dying. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, yeah, exactly. They're either he's not di- going to get hit by a bus, but he's got malaria. Maybe a little fentanyl <laughs> addiction. Who knows? You know I mean? This guy's in But listen, business. man, you know, I, I we changed up the, the, the format of this, and you, it, we, we started having guests on, which I really liked because I was it was just me blabbing and yeah. just had no life. And as soon as I said, okay, I want to have guests, I, 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 I got to get Will on. So I Thank really you, appreciate man. you coming on, you know. And- my pleasure. Honestly, this was so – my biggest fear was that my internet wouldn't hold up, and it seems like it worked great. So <laughs> Yeah, and, and like- I'm not hearing chickens from next door. That was no. my biggest fear. <laughs> Hell no. Ran them all over by now. And and um, if you get out to L.A., man, I, I, I have some really good shows I want to get you on. Definitely. Not, not capo level. But, well, you know. but there's but there's some good shows. Absolutely, you know. If I if you could just bring me some food to my cardboard box on Skid Row and pick me up and take me, and then we're good. You got it. You got <laughs> it. Thanks, Mike. It's good seeing you. Uh, so that was great, right, Patrick? That was awesome. I love Will's great. I love Will. Just another era ago, the networks would have been banging his door down to have him do a sitcom. You know he. He'd have been like the next Tim Allen or something or, or Seinfeld or he's just, he's so likable. Yeah. So got so much charisma. I know he's like the best. He's so likable. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, I just really hope people go and uh, start watching that special. Cause it, they'll really see how good he is. You know, he's, He's got, he's got to me what Leno had as a young guy, what Burr had, what Louie has. 
you know, and he's, you know, he's just only going to get better and better as the years go on because he loves it. Right. 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 He's never going to stop. He loves writing. He loves being on stage. All right. So that's it. This was a good show. And uh, next week we got a really good thing. I don't want to announce it just yet, but we will soon. We got a big surprise, right? It's a teaser. Yep. And don't forget, I told you before, Howlin' Roosevelt next Tuesday night, August 8th, Marlon Wayne's Jeremy Piven. Oh, man, just Paul Rodriguez, Vinny Fastline, Jimmy Shin. It's just Mike Binder. We just got a show. Renee Percy. And it's such a good room. Come on down. It's the Cine Grill and August 23rd at La Puglia, the Santa Monica Comedy Company. So we got some good shows coming up. And also I'm at the Improv next Sunday night for Bottle Shock. I told you about that. So all three of those you can see. I think that the picture should be right up here somewhere, according to uh, the world of technology. And visit us at standupworld.com. You can watch this and get all the choices. Just go to standupworld.com and you'll be able to get links to Apple and Spotify and Twitter and every place you can substack, every place you could possibly imagine. It'll be right there at standupworld.com. So just go there and get it. Standupworld.com. And that's it. Episode 34 out. Thank you so much. See you next week.